We're here with Dr. Robert Melamed, and uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little about what you're involved in. All right, well, I'm a professor at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs, where formerly I was chairman for a few years. And now, in addition, i have uh, involved in creating a, a new company, publicly traded company, Cannabis Science. We're on the NASDAQ, and we're a fully reporting bulletin board company. And our goal is to get cannabis-based medicines through the FDA so that they'll be available to anybody who needs them in any state in the union and to have it covered by health care. It's vitally important for, for patients in particular to hear the truth from someone who, who truly understands from a more scientific point of view. We need that encouragement. Well, you know, it's absolutely true because the truth is empowering and knowledge is empowering. And science really is simply a search for the truth. So all I do is read the wonderful efforts of other people that have put together experiments and the data. And I'm fortunate enough to be in the position that my specialty is assembling all of that into overviews and then attempting to communicate that in language that everybody can understand because that's actually how I have to understand it myself. Well, for, for us as patients, all too often when we go to see our, our local physicians, all too often we know more than what the physician knows about cannabis as medicine. Yeah. So we need a more articulate means in which to present that. Well, you know, the problem with physicians is that they're very busy people, and uh, the cannabis science, the science of cannabis, the endocannabinoid system, has literally over the past 10 years exploded. It went from like this minimal level, because it really only started with the discovery of the cannabinoid receptors. That's what told us that we had an endocannabinoid system and that THC was binding or THC-like compounds were binding to those receptors. And that led to the discovery that we were producing our own uh, compounds that did that. And hence, uh, cannabis is really simply impinging on our endocannabinoid system and modulating and enhancing that activity which in many cases is really very necessary because historically we died from age related we died from infectious diseases mm -hmm. today we're dying from age related illnesses and as a general rule but certainly many exceptions inflammation helps us fight infections that's part of what that process is doing we actually make free radicals that we focus in an effort to kill living entities that we don't want living within us all right uh, but in order to protect us against that, the endocannabinoid system turns down those inflammatory responses. So again, we have one of these balancing acts occurring here. You know, doctors are very busy people, and they don't have time to follow up on this exploding area of science that's, that's occurred over the past 10 years. So they're typically 10 years behind the times. They, in many cases, they don't know that there's an endocannabinoid system. I've spoken with people in the FDA, for example. They don't know there's an endocannabinoid system. I've spoken with DEA agents. They don't know there's an endocannabinoid system. So how can we expect them to appreciate our understanding when they have no knowledge of even the most basic elements of our worldview? So again, education is both intellectual education is spreading, but also the fact that patients are using cannabis and are getting these benefits and that we can see clearly a relationship with the benefits that they're claiming and the underlying science and the thousands of years of history, they all form a coherent truth. The only people out of whack are the government. So again, education and the fact that we are telling the truth and that they are at best misinformed, uninformed, but in many cases quite obviously now it seems that they're lying. So that as People are naturally motivated to try and improve their health and their lives of themselves and their loved ones. And cannabis does provide that solution. And it's because of that truth that the people are rising up now. We're returning medicine to the people. We're taking it away from big pharma and their false model, their inappropriate model of you know, linear magic bullets in favor of more holistic nature of, of improving health and our understandings of the world in general. And cannabis fundamentally is doing that. It's, it's a holistic medicine that impinges on our body systems in many areas and in many ways. And it's the collection of that along with how it affects consciousness and open-mindedness that creates a different worldview for us that we communicate that's spreading and that will change the world that we live in. 
Well, you, you, you spoke about physical pain. Uh, how about uh, the, the ever-rising post-traumatic stress disorder? Or just, you, you spoke a little bit about, about how the, the effects with, with our soldiers and all, but I mean, we're talking about a condition that affects a large percentage of Americans when you're talking about post-traumatic stress disorder. Mitch Early Wine uh, um, did a survey for cannabis science of veterans. He surveyed around 1,300 veterans and of those 1,300, 300 were qualified based on the questionnaires as, as truly being uh, suffering from PTSD. And of those patients, they all pretty much unanimously found benefits for using cannabis, but in particular for some of the most severe symptoms like the inability to sleep, uh, intrusive memories, and uh, you know, kind of aggressive behavior, irritability, all of these fundamental problems that tend to destroy family life, which then exacerbate the whole problem because of additional stress at that level, they, they're all, they all found benefits. So what I find very troublesome is that we trust these people to go fight for our freedom. They then have injuries as a result of their efforts to all, protect all of us. And then rather than listening to them, we somehow deem that what they're saying is not valid. I mean, we trust them to go kill for freedom, and they come back and, oh, you just want to get high. You know, what kind of a stupid answer is that when there, there's science, there's history, and you have the word of the people who have given so much for us, and we now decide to default to the condition that, oh, no, you can't use that because we haven't done the right, we, we haven't done the studies yet. Well, why don't we default to the position that, you know what, you've earned our respect. You've earned the right to say, this works for me and I want to use it. That should be the default position. This is horrendous. This is really, really a horrendous situation. And we've got to change it. Certainly. Well, Doctor, I'd like to thank you. It's been my pleasure. Sitting here with us today. Anytime.